Gil at Close Call Sports, I got a question about plate scores and specifically why our ML public numbers are different than this newest Twitter phenomenon known as umpire scorecards. I know the answer. Here it is. There are two main ways to get data from MLB. The first way is what I call the Mark T. Williams Boston University large data set way, the simple way. You let MLB decide whether a pitch is in or out of the strike zone. You go to Baseball Savant, run a query, get the search, download stuff. You can get millions of data points if you want. It's a really easy thing to do. There's a zone variable. Simplistically enough, if the value happens to be single digits, the pitch is in the zone. If it's double digits, it's out of the zone. You compare that with the umpire's call, and that tells you if the call was correct or not, zero error, etc. Very easy to do, very simplistic, but you're not actually doing work with the numbers or measurements of the pitches. That's not, I don't believe that's what umpire scorecards does. Scorecards, like me, will actually download the PXPZ, look at the PXPZ, strike zone bottom, strike zone top values, and do a formula based on that. The difference is the actual definitions of what we define as the horizontal boundaries of the edge of the strike zone, as well as the vertical, vertical ones pertaining to specifically the radius of a baseball. For instance, on the horizontal domain, that's a static thing. The plate doesn't move. That's easier to do. It's an easier formula. Uh, I came out with uh, 0.831. I went to MLB. I said, hey, are these numbers right? And MLB surprisingly got back to me and said yes. So <laughs> go figure, right? So I know that. And then on the vertical one, you know, it kind of helps to know the rules of the sport because you know what the rule book says. It says the physical properties of baseball it talks about circumference and you can contribute, you can actually go do the calculation and you get the use pi, it's pi day, and not really. And you get the width, the radius, the diameter of a baseball and you can use that to your advantage. And I use 0.123, which seems to be a very fair value based on that. And anyway, you add that to the strike zone top, you subtract that from the strike zone bottom, absolute values of course on the PX, uh, margins on the horizontal. All of that together, you can figure out if an umpire's call is going to be deemed correct or not. This is all based on the zero error ML public system. Once again, all the documentation for this, because we've been doing this for a long, long time, is on closecallsports.com. Visit us if you want to learn all of this stuff. As for scorecards, they blew up and they lasted about a day before people started really questioning them and they came back with answers. They had a huge, there was a crash to their, to the automated program and said, oh, we, the numbers don't work, they had to put out corrections, a whole bunch of messes. And there was actually a tweet reply that I found really interesting that said, I don't know how MLB calculates the strike zone, how, how it draws the strike zone. I'm sitting here thinking I've been doing this for how long? Visit us, you could ask me or you could go to close call, but yeah. So. At the end of the day, why are the numbers different? Because of the way that the math works. The, the values, I don't know what values Scorecards is using specifically for everything, but the point is that the values that we use, I vetted it through MLB, believe it or not, uh, way back when, and I read the rule book and I know how to calculate the actual proper, accurate radius of a baseball. One of the things really interesting that Scorecards says in a, is, is I don't know where to draw the line. It's so difficult to draw the line, the boundary of the strike zone to determine if it pitches in or out because yeah, one millimeter to the left, ball. One millimeter to the right, strike. Yeah, there's zero error. That's what zero means. So what one of the things that we did with UEFLFX and the ZE equivalent for that matter as well, and we have a graphic from Brooks Baseball back in three, four years ago where it illustrates this concept is you take the razor thin margin and you know that things aren't razor thin in real life and you say, I'm gonna take this line that's razor thin and make it an inch thick. And that's gonna be the borderline range. And that's what UFLFX is all about as well as the margin of error component and all the other errors that this strike zone technology that doesn't know what it's doing is up to. One of the things that we're gonna be doing, and this is sort of a sneak peek, that you might find fascinating, we're putting this together, is you remember how this year we're doing preliminary scores the day of and then morning after we're coming up with final scores and we're the only people who do both those numbers and we compare them yeah one of the, i think you're going to be really surprised at how many pitches during a game from the original preliminary numbers the raw real-time numbers until the the overnight post-game processing numbers 
I think you're going to find it really interesting just how many pitches per game have numbers that get changed. It doesn't always result in a quality correctness for an umpire's call getting changed, but it's a really significant number of pitches that get changed. The numbers get changed overnight. I think you're going to find it really interesting. Anyway, we'll have more discussion on this, but I wanted to answer that user question. Visit us online at closecallsports.com. Feel free to ask any more questions you have as a reply, and we'll see you on the site. We're doing pitch plate scores for every game of the postseason, preliminary and final. See you on the site.